Hi, I'm Robin from Turquoise Coast Computers. Today we're gonna to be talking about these new ink tank printers that you might have seen advertised around and how they might not be quite as efficient as they first seem, and in some cases, an outright scam. So these are the new ink tank printers. On paper, these printers seem like they might be very cost effective. Um, everybody's familiar with how expensive ink can be, especially the little cartridges. So the prospect of being able to buy your ink in big bottles and pour it into your printer seems like a really good idea. The reality is there's some inherent issues with all inkjet printers, and this is kind of exacerbated by these uh, ink tank printers. The other thing that seems to be happening is a lot of these manufacturers, specifically Epson in this case, uh, seem to be taking older, cheaper equipment and selling it at a premium because it has an ink tank on it. And we'll go in and have a look at some of these things right now. So here we have uh, two uh, Epson printers. One of them is the Epson EcoTank ET2850, and the other one is a XP3100. Uh, so the ET2850 is one of these new EcoTank printers, and then the XP3100 is just one of the uh, standard sort of entry-level home printer. The XP3100 is $99, and the ET2850 is $499. So on the surface, they look extremely similar, that's not everything I suppose, but let's have a look at the actual specs of each of the printers and what they actually do and how fast they do them. So the print resolution, the print quality of each printer is identical. They, they print at exactly the same resolution. The print speed, which is probably one of the main features that would differentiate the price of a printer, they print black and, uh, and color at the, at the exact same speed. When we go down to the scanning, they scan at exactly the same resolution. Neither of them have document feeders, which is a really good function to have on a printer, especially if you're spending $500 on a printer, you'd expect it to have a document feeder. Uh, which means you can put a stack of documents on the top of the printer instead of one page at a time. Both of these printers just have a flatbed scanner on the top. So the specs of these printers are nearly identical. It seems, looking at the specs and looking at the pictures, this EcoTank ET2850 is a $99 printer with the tanks on the side of it. Adding these tanks to the printers is, uh, is not so much a technical addition, they're not that what they're doing is they're taking out the equipment that holds the cartridges and replacing it with some plastic bottles. So you're not actually getting any more technology for your money. And what you're getting is some plastic bottles and some pieces of pipe that run into where the cartridges used to be. This leads us on to the next problem with these printers and with all inkjet printers, really. Um, you might be familiar with inkjet printers occasionally, the heads clogging and blocking on the printer. This issue is significantly worse with the ink tank printers. What you'll find with an inkjet printer that takes cartridges, the ink has to travel like almost millimeters from the edge of the cartridge down into the head and then out onto the paper. It's, it's generally a very short um, distance that it has to travel. And even in that, over time, if you don't use the printer, the ink can dry out, it can clog up, and it can clog the, he clog the heads on your printer. Depending on which brand of printer that you get, this is a, more of a problem than others. You'll find cheaper printers will suffer from this more, and higher quality or business grade inkjet printers suffer from it less. The problem with these ink tank printers, in comparison to a cartridge, had this huge length of pipe running from the tank to the printing head inside the printer. This causes a lot more opportunity for the ink to clog up, to dry out, and to, to cause issues. What the printer manufacturers have done, and in Epson's case, they seem to have 
created a feature on the printer where it flushes and purges ink a lot more frequently to deal with this increased chance of clogging and, uh, and blocking of the, of the ink pipes that run uh, up, to the, up to the print head. And this is where we get on to this, maybe not just being efficient, but actually being an outright scam. These Epson printers have been fitted with a device in the back, which is uh, essentially an ink sponge. Because these printers have to purge and waste so much ink to maintain the heads from becoming clogged, that ink has to go somewhere. They obviously don't want the users knowing that they're buying ink that's not being used, it's just being squirted out the back of the printer into these ink sponges. Um, so it's not a user serviceable part. So you have a, once the printer's doing its, its sort of daily maintenance and looking after itself, and every time you do a print job, although you're getting this ink in a lot bigger bulk and at a lot cheaper price, you're still paying a premium from it because you're having all this extra ink, but you're not having the luxury of using that extra ink. It's a huge proportion of it is being squirted out the back of the printer into this ink sponge. What happens with this sponge is it fills up and there's a sensor inside the printer that once that ink sponge is full, it shuts down the printer. Mechanically, you'll find and we'll see here in some of these other videos where people have been combating issues with these ink tank printers, that it is actually quite easy if you have the technical know-how to get these ink sponges out and replace them so they can absorb more ink and allow the printer to continue printing. What it seems Epson have done, the sensor inside the printer that detects whether the ink sponge is full, once that gets triggered, there's no way to reset it. So you can't pull the ink sponge out, put a fresh one in, because the sensor has been triggered and it will forever say that the ink sponge is full. Epson themselves have said that there are other consumable parts that are non-replaceable with inside the printer. Uh, which is, it's not just the sponge, but that's why the thing triggers this. The biggest concern with this is people are finding these ink sponges are filling up within a year, well, just over actually, unfortunately, just over a year's worth of use. So people are spending $500 on a printer. Uh, they think they're saving money on ink, but they are getting the ink at a cheaper price, but they are wasting a load of ink and it's being injected into these sponges in an effort to keep these heads clean. And then once this sponge fills up, the printer's essentially shutting itself down. So people are in actual fact, not getting value for money on the ink. And they're spending a lot of money on a printer that was otherwise only worth $99. And to add insult to injury, these printers are shutting themselves down and becoming non-functional in under two years. Uh, sometimes most people are reporting it after about a year and a half. This, uh, this printer is shutting itself down. They're sending them back to Epson and Epson are saying they're beyond economical repair. If you've been recommended to purchase a ink tank printer, this is something I'd seriously consider. Um, you can look online and see the reviews and the issues that people are having with these printers. If any computer salesperson is recommending one of these things, I would suggest that they don't understand the technology or they're only really concerned with the margin uh, involved in selling one of these uh, printers. So my advice would be to steer clear of these ink tank printers. Uh, I don't think they're good value at all. I think the printer manufacturers are using these ink tanks as an opportunity to add huge markup to very low priced entry level equipment and sell it at a premium. And they're also touting efficiencies with the ink that are actually compromised by the fact that how wasteful that these, these printers are. It can be a bit of a minefield navigating which printers are best suited to your needs, especially I find the, the hardest demand to meet is people who do casual printing, just they're, they're not doing a huge amount of it, so they don't want a big expensive printer. I think I find those ones are the hardest ones to meet the requirements of. In a lot of cases, I would suggest to people if you don't have a huge amount of a printing requirement, I wouldn't waste money on uh, a cheap printer. Um, most printers you'll find under $150 are going to be plagued by print head issues and they're not going to last any decent length of time. And if you're not using them very much, you could end up getting very few print jobs out of the printer before you need to replace it. In those cases, uh, especially in Durian Bay here, we have the Community Resource Centre. They've got large 
uh, commercial grade uh, production quality printers in there. So if you want anything printed from a letter or a resume all the way up to professional printing requirements, they can do that for you. I think it's a much better option to drop in there um, occasionally when you need something printed off and pay a couple of dollars to get something printed than it is to waste money on, a, on a, what some of these cheaper entry level printers. If you have high requirements and your interest in these ink tank printers is to save money because of the volume of printing that you're doing, then inkjet probably isn't the solution. You should be looking at something more along the color laser jet line. There's plenty of models available from other manufacturers and the price of color laser printing has come right down in recent years and uh, it's, it's much more viable to have a, a decent quality business grade laser color printer. Having sold and worked on printers for over 20 years now, at Circles Coast Computers, we've got a pretty good idea of which models are gonna be reliable, which ones are gonna last, and which ones are gonna be good value for money for your particular use case. So if you do have an interest in getting a printer or you were previously looking at one of these ink tank printers, um, come into our shop at 63 Bashford Street and we can talk through which ones would, uh, would suit you best. And in some cases, the answer is to not buy a printer at all and use some of the local printing resources in town or in whichever town you're in. A lot of towns have these community resource centers that have these print facilities. And in my opinion, that's a much better option than buying a, a, a cheap printer and uh, certainly a better option than buying these EcoTank printers. Um, as it seems, they, uh, they're not as economical or good value as they appear. So you'll see online on YouTube and in forums, a lot of articles and videos and tutorials aimed at trying to fix these issues relating to these ink tank printers. In most cases, these fixes are designed at trying to put extra pipes into the Epson printer to bypass the ink that goes into this uh, sponge, which uh, in turn fills up and which then makes the printer useless. Um, so people are trying to bypass that sponge and have it drain out into a separate bottle of waste ink. And this is when people are noticing quite how much ink that they're putting in the top of this printer is just essentially pouring out the bottom. So taking all that into account, I don't think these printers present the value that they propose. And I think there's much better options out there for either print quality or print performance or efficiency and value. So if you would like to have a look at some different printers, uh, pop on down to 63 Bashford Street, uh, Turquoise Coast Computers, or give us a call on 0499 380 238. Cheers.